Let's talk about why do men cheat? Cheat on their girlfriends or wives? Well, Ashley, what, you want to start with that? Why do men cheat? Why do men cheat? Why do you think they cheat coming from a woman's perspective? I haven't really ever thought about it. Um, well, I'll give my, my two cents on it because I, I see that a lot oftentimes in phone sessions. And the reality is most people are not with somebody that they really want to be with. They're impatient. The person that they really want doesn't come along. And then they find somebody that's pretty good in a lot of ways, but not necessarily what they really want. And so they're tired of waiting. They're tired of being single. They're tired of pressure from the parents. Why haven't you got married yet? When are you going to have kids? When am I going to get grandkids? Whatever it happens to be, or all their friends are getting married, especially like when I was in my 20s, there was a lot of pressure. It was like, well, when are you guys getting married? When are you going to put a ring on that finger? And so you feel obligated because everybody else is doing it, and they're looking to validate their life choices, and a lot of people end up settling. A lot of women marry guys that they're not even in love with, and the guys have no idea that their woman's not in love with them. I wrote about an example in my book of a, a doctor that I knew. I met him and his wife. His wife was very beautiful, and he pursued her for a long time, and she reluctantly agreed. And I, I don't know, it was several years they were together before she said she actually fell in love with him. They've since gotten divorced, but it's if so, whether it's just it's the job or their relationships, or their friendships, or what they do for a living, or they have assholes for business partners, whatever happens to be, people settle, and their story creates the reasons why they stay and why they settle, and then just life naturally happens, and then they meet somebody that they really connect with in a way that they never connected with their, their wife or girlfriend, and there's chemistry there, there's strong attraction there that wasn't with that they just don't have or never had with their, or maybe they had at one time and it's been long gone and it's like a moment of opportunity. And so they start hooking up with somebody else, having an affair. They eventually leave their spouse. But, or oftentimes I see where you got both of them. You got two people that are maybe in a relationship with somebody else and neither one of them are happy. And then they meet each other and they really click a lot of chemistry, a lot of sparks. They start fooling around and then they leave their spouses. Eventually, they get married, settle down. But oftentimes, statistically, relationships that come from cheating tend to end in cheating. In cheating yeah. Oh, interesting. So, so it's like most most people just settle because well, they, they that, don't like waiting. They're, they're they're moving away from something too. They're not really moving towards. And my, the first thought I had was they might not know what they want, and they're just kind of like going with what's there. And then they're all of a sudden in a serious relationship. And well, it's like you think, how often do you meet? I use this all the time as examples. How often do you meet a new best friend? How often do you meet somebody that you, guy or girl, that you've just yeah. become, you just feel like you've known them forever? It's just such it's a, a rare thing in life. Oh, it's pretty often for me. <laughs> That's not say, been my experience. In my experience, I've, I meet a lot of people that I'm like, you're awesome, like chunky. Well, everybody loves Junkie. Yeah. As she loves everybody. <laughs> that's true, too. But that's not most people's experience. There's always exceptions to the rule, but that's not most people's experience. Yeah. I don't click with most people. But it's it's effortless from the time you meet. You just kind of cl complete each other's sentences. You have similar shared experiences. And it just kind of flows effortlessly. Yeah. I think, like both with men, why men and women cheat. I, I think at times, not for everyone, a part of it could be they just, they haven't thought about what they wanted and they don't know what they want. And they're still trying to figure out who they are. They don't know who they are either. And so as they grow and start to kind of discover that things change and then, yeah. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Well, a lot of people want a <laughs> monkey branch. They want to go. I think it, it, yeah. They want to line up the replacement and, and have a pretty good, definitive feeling that it's going to work out with this new person before they blow up their current relationship, or whether it's mm -hmm. they're just you know boyfriend girlfriend, or whether they're married. And so they don't want to leave unless they have the safety of somebody new. You know, it's like they don't let go of one branch until they got the hand firmly on the next. I would say. 
my experience has been when men cheat on women, it's because they forget what the relationship is all about. They're focusing too much on getting their needs met and what the other person or what they can get out of it as compared to what they can contribute to the relationship. I think if you go into the relationship with the idea of what you can get out of it, you're setting yourself up for disaster because relationships about what you can give, what you can contribute. Not to say that there isn't a part of you that, that sees certain things that, that, that you like receiving. That's not a bad thing. But if you're going into it with the intent of what you can get rather than what you can give, I think that's a, that's a recipe for disaster. And I think sometimes people lose that. Or they think the grass is greener on the other side. Grass is never greener on the other side. The grass sometimes. Is, the grass is greener where you water it. Like I said, people that have settled... It's like they, they have a vision or a feeling what they think it's supposed to be like and then yeah, it, nobody good. comes along or maybe they met somebody once but they screwed it up that they really clicked with and they turned the other person off. And like, like I said, my experience is you get about one to, depending on your life path, you get one to three of those people that you encounter per decade. Yeah, I can see that. So it's not a lot. And then, you know, if you're two, three years, four years, five years, and you really, you know, you might be dating a lot, but you just haven't met anybody you really clicked with, and you start to think, ah, oh, it's not going to happen. And then you meet somebody that has a lot of the things you want, and then you're surrounded by people that sell, and because they want to validate their life choices and the, you know, the kind of relationship they're in, they convince you to be like them. And then you go ahead and you settle. And you're still not really happy and because you're not really that into it. You don't really, you're not all in. You don't make the effort. She can feel it. You know it. And then life intervenes and somebody comes into your life and you're like, wow, I never felt this way about mm -hmm. my wife. Or the woman never felt that way about her husband. And you think, wow, it's fate. Got to be soulmates. It's, supposed, it's the way it's supposed to be. Sometimes they, they come along and it doesn't work out, but it wakes you up enough to where you're like, I want to know what that's like. I want to, I want to be that into somebody. But it's it's hard waiting, because we live in a society that says you need instant gratification. You need to become a millionaire overnight. Your business needs to take off right now. Your career, you need to go from entry level to CEO in a matter of months. I don't like to hear that it's gonna. You know, you got to think in terms of decades accomplishing big things. Big things have little beginnings, but most people, they don't want to wait for something great. So they settle, and then life brings somebody along that wakes them up, reminds them of what they really wanted in the past. Cool. Helps them get unstuck. Unstuck. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about last night, was we were talking about well, why do women cheat, and you were saying how guys stop showing up you know can you talk about that a little bit more so uh, if you take a look at how is a woman wired they want safety they want a man who's going to protect them right they the basic needs which is biological because if they're going to have offspring right if they're going to have kids can i trust him is he going to show up is he going to protect us can he care for us can he provide for us those, those, that, that makes sense that that's like a biological necessity. And if a man is in a relationship with, with that woman and he's not showing up, he's not present, she's makes sense to me biologically, not because she wants to feel this way, but she's going to feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. She's going to say, I can't trust him. He didn't come home last Friday night. So is he going to come home? So when should I not expect him to show up again. If he did it once, he's likely to do it again, right? Mm -hmm. So the next thing you know, her tension is higher. She starts being more prone to having emotional swings or emotional outbursts. Her tension is higher, so she's going to have more health challenges. He doesn't take the time to listen to her and open her up. And then she starts having health challenges and feels like crap all the time. So then he withdraws more and starts going maybe even more in, in the, the other direction. So the legs close. Right. So that 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 makes sense to me. It's a biological thing. I, I think women test their men not because they intentionally want to, but there's a part of them that wants to know, can I trust this person? Can I rely on this person? Are they going to be there for me and my babies? Mm -hmm. Whether the kid, whether they have kids or not, that's just how they're wired. So if the man creates that void, the woman wants to fill the void. I think that's actually healthy that if a woman's needs aren't being met, that she looks elsewhere. 
why would she keep doing the same thing over and over again if it showed that it, that it's not her needs aren't being taken care of? So it makes total sense to me that that same inherent biology that wants to test the man to to make sure that you can trust him, but he's repeatedly screwing up. Then it makes sense to me that if those needs are being met somewhere else, well, then why not? Yeah, it's like the the next door neighbor. Just they happen to start talking out in the front lawn while she's taking out the trash. Her husband's at work. Maybe he, this guy works from home. He's single, or maybe he's not happy with his wife, or maybe his wife didn't lose the baby weight and house housed on him, if you will. And so they're not having sex anymore. And then they click and they start. It just starts as talking, and he's actually listening and interested in what she has to say. And then she starts complaining about her husband or her boyfriend. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. Then, you know, then at some point, hey, let's have a glass of wine or let's have a beer and sit down and talk. And She feels relaxed friend, yeah, for she, the first time in a long time. Yeah, she feels she, heard and understood. She feels heard and understood. She relaxes even more. Yep. The legs yeah. are less tight. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's total biology. It's up, I know that like these comments are going to, you know, what we're talking about right now, especially is going to be upsetting to a lot of guys just because I know the comments, they get pissed about that. Right? Well, maybe the they need to. Women aren't loyal. I need a virgin and this wouldn't happen to me. Mm. But what if what if the guy's not been showing up? I mean, obviously that's if she starts screwing around while they're still married, then obviously, you know, she's cheating. And that's doesn't have you know, like we we're talking about earlier, that relationships typically that come from cheating end in cheating at some point. But not all of them. Some people live happily ever after when they sure. get together. But that's a small percentage of them, most of them have just don't end well because the people don't have any integrity yeah and i would and you I would always reap your karma in our relationship 1.0 you had asked me like why because i drove him to his vasectomy and was supportive of his vasectomy even though i wanted kids but in our relationship 1.0 i didn't even really fully feel like i wanted to have kids with you so one anyway, point so was, was pre vasectomy. Yeah. And then once. Wait, did you just say you didn't want to have kids with me? I did. I didn't fully want what? to have kids with you, and that's why I was. I was like, if you want to get a vasectomy, get a vasectomy. If yeah, that's no. what you want to do. Um. Because I wasn't showing up. You weren't showing up. I was perturbable. I was reactive. I projected my frustration and anger. I still loved you a lot, but, but you were she not didn't, showing up. Yeah, she actually didn't trust me, and it was my fault. And then you started showing up, and then I was like, let's go get a ring. Let's reverse your vasectomy. And I kind of hounded him on getting his reverse vasectomy, too. I'm like, can you when? do this already? When? Call the doctor. Yeah. Did you call the doctor oh, today? Oh, wow. How many times oh did you ask gosh, about that Oh, my gosh. So many times. Yeah. Yeah. I got it done. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but aware. there was always a little bit of doubt. Until you actually went through with it, getting the chicken bag cut open. Well, play, yeah. Play open the chicken bag, connect the wires, stitch it back up. He knew he had to go through anesthesia, too, for that, which yeah, isn't fun. I didn't like that. And he found out the price of it, too. It was just all not it was a an chunk. enjoyable idea. It was, it was significantly more than getting the vasectomy. But I also told you that I, I'm open to um, getting a sperm donor if you oh, didn't want to do it. Yeah, no. We're but I was like, in in our relationship 2.0, I was like full on like, I'm getting pregnant. We can use a sperm donor. You can get a reverse vasectomy. Whatever you want, but it's going to happen. But the point is, is that after it was, it was I worked switch. on me, there was a significant shift where Ashley trusts me. Mm -hmm. And then now she actually wants to have, have children with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so we did it. And we did. And I still show up. Yeah. And I show up even more now. I'm getting better and better with how I show up. Yep. And uh, it's all about having help where you need it, having people who call you out when you need it, which is pretty often early on. And it's doing the work that you need. For me, it was the consciousness exercises, night and day different how I show up and having tools. So, for example, when I feel bottled up and I feel a little like irritated, I go in the room and I rage. And Ashley loves it when I rage. She absolutely loves it because it's showing I'm more emotionally intelligent. I take responsibility for, for where I'm at. I'm aware of where I'm at. 
responsibility and I express it rather than hold it in and think I'm going to like control this, this mountain lion, you know, like it's not going to happen. You're not going to control that thing. So go in there, express, get, get, let your body do what it naturally wants to do, which is recover and then show up clear and be more present. Yeah. I've noticed in the last year, year and a half that you're definitely calmer. Both you guys are than you used to be mm-hmm. and more at ease with one another. I agree. It's cool to see. Thank you. I also like when you do body connection. Oh, yeah, the consciousness exercises. I do those every day. Yeah. I do the conscious exercises every day. My staff, they can tell. They're like, you're so much more calm. You have more fun. You take things less seriously. When I don't do it, my staff can tell. They and said things get to you a little bit more. You're not as much fun. You don't roll with it as well. So I'm like, dang, how do they know? It's that obvious. So I do the conscious exercises every day, and I show up really well the t- only time you've the only times you've ever been perturbable you've after the fact told me that you hadn't done body connection or yeah i took a week off exercises. so i came clean yeah. i said yeah i haven't done it for the last every week. time yeah and i and i get myself in trouble so i do it i brush I, every I day prefer. floss every day i do it's like working out consciousness exercise every day yeah well, well to me it's like it for the working out yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it, one time it, in the last 12 months which was what, day before yesterday? It's a start. Big things have little beginnings. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just like the yes. little little pooch you got going on there. Big things have a little, little, little dad beginning. Bod. But hey, but, but you, you know what? Like I, I used to work out. I want to look good because I want to look desirable and attractive. But what's more attractive than a guy who can be present? Yeah, I was going to say I'd prefer you do the consciousness exercises over working out. Well, it's like we have the socialized <laughs> story that guys think – Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna look jacked. I'm gonna have big arms, big shoulders, a big back. You know, have the six pack. Women like the six pack. I promise you, a guy who has amazing presence, great sense of humor, doesn't take anything personally or seriously, has fun, owns his shit, amazing presence. That guy will attract beautiful women because of who he's being. Is more attractive to women than having the muscles or having the bod or having the car. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, wouldn't you say the car, the bod, all that, the looks, the nice shirt, the sleeve on their arm, all that bullshit. I promise you a man who has presence will get way further with much more desirable women just from their presence. And the only thing that'll cost you is putting in the time and putting in the energy. And and I believe you have that available for your clients, don't you, Corey, the consciousness exercises? Yeah, we got the, at this point, at the time of this video, we've got one through seven so far. And over the coming weeks, we'll have the, the other five uploaded. Yeah, you don't need the sports car. You don't need the, the, the crotch rocket. You don't need all the fancy clothes. Just be cool and show up with that presence. And the consciousness exercises will help someone develop that presence in a relatively short amount of time. Within a month or two of doing it, they'll notice a significant shift in their state. That's cool. what I do, and, and it's made a, a huge difference for, for how I show up for my family. More so than, than, say, counseling. Counseling, I didn't notice the shift. Even though we tried... Hey, I don't uh, think you had very good counselors, though, either. Well, it, the, the counseling, I think, for some people can, was, can be helpful, but for you're me... you talking about marriage counseling when you were married Marriage before? counseling, they're telling you, okay, when she's saying this, this is what you should say. They're telling you what to do. They're giving you strategies. They're not shifting your consciousness and how you show up. So it's as if it's the idea of, hey, you can be a pissed asshole... But if you say this, this, and this, then 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 you'll get you'll make it through. No, you're not going to make it through the gauntlet because they know you're pissed. Even if you say the right things, they're still not going to buy it because it's not about saying the right thing. It's about being the right thing. It's about showing up calm, cool, collected, and present. And then you say things that are consistent with that. You can't fake it. Women know they will hammer you more if they think that you're trying to say the right thing. Meanwhile, under there, you're just boiling. Yep. It's true. Oh, I've had a lot, of, a lot of guys over the years I've done phone sessions with, and they're like, I, talking to you, doing one phone session, I got more out of this than six months, two years of marriage and couples therapy. Yeah, man. It's not about what to say to women when you meet them. It's about who you be when you meet women. That's what's going to break the ice and make them feel comfortable. Your state brings out that other rhythm in, in, the, in the person. So if you're cool... They're comfortable. If you're bottled up and tense, they feel that and they get tense and pull back. So, yeah, it's not about saying the right thing. It's about showing up the right way. 
Agreed.